mites are external parasites that suck the blood of adult bees and brood. This is a serious parasite of honeybees. Mites cause bite wounds, blood loss, secondary illnesses, and maybe even spread diseases. Mite populations grow slowly at first, but rapidly escalate. In colder climates, it may take up to five years before an infested colony dies from varroa, but it only takes a year or two in warmer areas. You can sometimes detect mites simply by examining adult bees or brood. You can also detect varroa with a quart jar and a can of ether engine starter fluid. Brush about one inch of live bees into the jar. Spray starter fluid in the jar, cap it, shake the bees vigorously, and inspect the sides of the jar for mites. Another test uses detector boards, pieces of heavy paper or cardboard with an adhesive upper surface. Place detector board under a 1 8 inch wire screen. Place the assembly inside the hive on the bottom board. Leave the detector board in the hive for a few days, then inspect it for mites. Mite death and hive diagnosis can be hastened by using Apistan plastic strips. For hive detection with Apistan, remove all marketable honey supers, insert two plastic strips in the hive body, and check detector board at regular intervals. Within seven days, remove strips and return honey supers. You can control Varroa with either Apistan or Mitocure. To use Apistan, remove all supers of marketable honey. Insert two Apistan strips in each hive body, one strip between frames three and four, and one strip between frames seven and eight. Leave strips in hive for at least 28 days, but no longer than 45 days. To use Mitocure, follow the instructions for tracheal mites. Not all problems are caused by diseases or pests. One of the most common colony malfunctions is queenlessness. The first sign of trouble is inactivity at the hive entrance especially at times when neighboring hives are active. As a queen ages, her egg and pheromone output decrease. Workers sense this and normally begin rearing a new queen, a process called supersedure. If, for whatever reason, the old queen dies or the supersedure fails, the colony becomes queenless. Colonies that swarm excessively also are prone to queenlessness. In these cases, one new daughter queen after another emerges and flies away with a portion of the colony's workers. If one of the daughters fails to take over the parent colony, it becomes queenless. Notice the sparse brood pattern and bee population. In this colony, there are numerous queen cells, some of which are emerged. This indicates that the colony swarmed and failed to requeen itself. Notice the bumpy, irregular drone brood. This is typical of laying workers. Without a queen's pheromones, certain workers develop ovaries and lay eggs. These so-called laying workers can only produce drones, no workers. So the colony's population begins a terminal decline. 
Medications and pesticides aren't the only way to maintain healthy hives. Here are some other important guidelines. Keep hives well ventilated. Prop open lids to exhaust damp air and lean hives forward to drain out rainwater. Requeen annually. Good young queens promote health and productivity. Beehives do best with lots of sun. Don't keep them in constant shade. Provide wind breaks, especially in winter. Don't put hives in low spots in your yard that accumulate cool, damp air. Some stocks of bees are genetically resistant to diseases and pests. If you rear queens, watch for signs of disease or pest resistance and breed queens from those colonies. Used equipment can harbor disease pathogens. Buy used equipment only from a reputable beekeeper. Use only standard Langstroth hives. Bees kept in homemade boxes are difficult or sometimes impossible to inspect for diseases and treat. In many states, it's illegal to keep bees in non-standard equipment. Don't keep bees in areas with heavy insecticide use. Replace old black combs. They harbor years worth of natural toxins and disease organisms. That's a brief look at the most common diseases and pests which can affect your bee colonies. Remember, don't rely on inspectors or anyone else to alert you to health problems in your hives. Learn the symptoms of these major bee health problems and always be on the lookout for them. Know your hives and keep them healthy. In our next show, we'll reap the fruits of a very busy season. We'll be harvesting our honey crop. There's a lot of work involved, but it'll be worth it. Let's hope for a big harvest to use in our own kitchen tables and also to sell. The honey's even sweeter when it brings extra money to the family budget. <laughs>